Roar blading season is officially upon us. This is not a drill, people. I repeat, roar blading season is officially upon us. It's kicked off and there's even more news since the last video that I brought out less than seven days ago. So let's get into it. Razors have a new soul plate on the way for the Razors cult. It's basically the worst kept secret in rollerblading at the moment. Jeff Howard put up an Instagram story that showed the plate in all of its black glory on a blue skate. And if you've been watching Jumbo recently, which I cannot recommend enough, they've got a new episode out. Check it out, link below. Andrew Broom, also his setup has the new cult soul plate. It's really cool that they're experimenting and hopefully making the soul plate wider because one of the main complaints about the soul plate is that it's not kept up with the times and it is a little bit too narrow. But a main stumbling point that they could run into is a lot of people loved the cults because of the backslide plate and the new system doesn't appear to incorporate the same backslide plate. So you might win over some new fans with the extra width, but you might lose some fans with getting rid of something that is quite popular. So it'll be interesting to see how this is received once it comes out. I also find it quite funny that they've still kept the little like nub bit at the back for the 45 degree strap or a crank strap, even though no one sells crank straps. If you've watched the last video, you'll know that I was talking about Brain Dead Wheel Co that teased coming out, but spring cup and then never actually came out. So far, all we've got to go on is a wheel. But I was talking to Coda Holt. You can check out the latest episode of Platform Podcast. Coda works at the Them Skate store and has, you know, had contact with the guys at Brain Dead. And he tells me that it is actually going to be a wheel company. It looks like they're potentially going to have a team and he's going to have some involvement. Uh, yeah, I, I believe Braindead Wheel Co. is going to be a new company. Hey, I'm going to skate them, so they're really good too. <laughs> but I really like them. They're, they're, uh, they're a great pour and uh, I'm just testing them right now, but they're really good so far, um, both park and street. And I'm stoked uh, to work on some stuff for it. <laughs> At this moment in time, there are over 30 brands creating aggressive rollerblading wheels. They are listed on the screen now, over 30, and that's just off the top of my head. I'm sure there's plenty on there that I've completely forgot about, and it is such an incredibly oversaturated market. Not only is it oversaturated, it's really competitive. You're competing against really popular brands like Undercover Wheels, Dead Wheels, 5050, Chroma, in the UK, we've got revolver wheels. There's just, it's like, I feel like it's such a hard market to compete against all these other people that have, especially the ones that have got big name riders, big name pro wheels, or people like Mushroom Blade who are releasing wheels and they're selling out almost instantly. I just don't feel like we need any more new wheel brands, especially when a lot of them are creating like 58 millimeter and 60 millimeter wheels. I mean, how many of them do you need? Sure, it's great to have variation. It's great to give these skiers homes and give them pro wheels. And, you know, you can't just have a few teams and expect everyone to be catered for. But at this point, it is starting to feel like it's getting a bit ridiculous. I love variety as much as the next person, but my general feeling is we don't need any more wheel companies. We need more rollerbladers. And with that thought lingering in the air, I have another new wheel brand to introduce. Somatics Wheels are coming out of Texas. The debut collection from Somatics brand is called Organized Chaos and it features an 80mm wheel, a 58mm wheel with 92A hardness, a 58mm wheel with 88 hardness, and an anti-rocker. Or, as my American friends like to say, anti-rocker. I will never get tired of doing that. Quite a few people have been sharing their posts on Instagram over the past week, but I've done a little bit of digging. I found out a little bit more about the brand. Turns out it is run by Josh Klowicki and Fritz Pietzner. If you remember those guys, they had an exceptional video series in the 2010s called Fritz and Glow Invade Europe, which they had on the Razor's YouTube channel. They basically just went city hopping from city to city in Europe, killing contests, releasing great street edits, really making a name for themselves. Both of them had pro wheels for sick urethane and until recently, Josh was pro for red eye wheels. He had several pro wheels from them. He's left that brand now and they've decided to go in this venture on their own. And it seems like it's got a good chance of working because both of them have been involved in the blading industry in the past. 
Josh runs Blading Camp, which is very successful, very popular, and Fritz Pietzner runs Carrier Skate Shop in Texas, which has been going strong for a while now. So if anyone can make it work, chances are they can. Plus, they've both got solid reputations behind them. They've already picked up a rider over here in the UK. They have started sponsoring Fabian Mathy, who won the under-18s at the most recent Winter Clash. Apparently, he's going to be in the junior team. Also, it looks as if Nils Janssens and Montre Livingston are going to be the first pro riders for the team. If that is the basis for their pro team, Nils and Montre, that is a solid basis for a new company. Both those guys were previously pro for BHC Wheels and had pro wheels with them. Montre left not too long after getting his last pro wheel from BHC. He was on Julian Baz's win brand for a while, but nothing really happened. They never released a pro wheel for him. In fact, they never released any wheels after he joined, so that just kind of seemed to fizzle out. And it was never made official, but Nils Janssens quietly quit BHC a while ago. If you've ever watched his vlogs, in a recent one, he is setting up his skates and he's putting undercover wheels in there and he talks about how undercover are his favorite wheels at the moment. I got some a mix of undercover and God's wheels that I had laying around my house. I think it's the best wheels out there. The undercover urethane, I think it's the same factory, both using God's and undercover. It's simply amazing. Nothing has been confirmed yet, but I am willing to bet both those guys are on the brand. And I've spoken to Josh Klawicki about this, and apparently Somatic is not just going to be a wheel brand. What's up, y'all? My name is Fritz Spitzner. And um, just wanted to let y'all know, uh, we started a new brand called Somatics with Josh Glowicki and Jordan Glowicki. Um, started this company with intentions of making cool products for the skating community, all genres in roller skating and in inline skating. Our first drop is an 80 millimeter, 258s and a 45. As you can see right there, those beauties, all marbled. Uh, we went all out with these. Uh, we chose premium grade urethane, uh, cool colors and cores. And um, Jordan, you want to take over? There it goes. I can make it pick up my camera. Yeah, so we've got a 58 pink, 58 gray marble, a 45 anti-rocker, three color marble, 80 millimeter marble as well. Uh, high performance, high quality urethane here. This is sort of the goal for us. This is what we're targeting. Um, you know, just interesting products, things that we ourselves would want things that we would skate uh, where the quality is right. We got Hermano. Go ahead, Hermano. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Jordo. Um, hey, everybody. Y'all might know me. Um, my name's Josh, and I'm one of the founders of, uh, of Blading Camp. Um, also, I'm finishing up right now my previous commitments with with, with Red Eyes, with the sponsor, and uh, shout out to Red Eyes. Thank y'all for all the love and all the years of taking care of me. But uh, this is such a cool project. It was my brother and my best friend. Uh, couldn't couldn't pass up this opportunity. Y'all know with uh, with blading camps, uh, we're all about committed to the future, to building the industry stronger, and to giving back to the community. That's what we're going to bring to Cymatics as well. So hopefully, uh, taking care of a lot of the kids and making sure the kids have what they need to just evolve and keep pushing the sports and or keep pushing the sport and keep uh, just keep rolling. So. Uh, this is exciting. Uh, it's been really fun up to this point. Everybody's asking who you are, what are we doing, who is everybody, and uh, appreciate everybody up to now for, uh, for all the love and all the all the hype. Um, it's been fun. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Cats out of the bag. Let's go. <clears throat> Let's yeah. go. All right. Peace. Peace. I've got a lot of respect for Fritz, I've got a lot of respect for Josh, and I really like the kind of marketing and the imagery and the branding that they've gone for so far. So yeah, wish them all the best. It's sometimes easy to forget about Create Originals. They've kind of been operating in the background for a few years now, but they have been going strong for so long with one of the best anti-rocker frames in the market. They're back with a new collection, a new coffee-inspired collection. It comes with six frames and a t-shirt that I absolutely love. My two favourite frames are the Vanilla Latte one and the Cappuccino one. They seem kind of similar to the collaboration frame they did with Fiberlux a while back. With it. I think it was like natural colour, but it's got a kind of like nice cream and then dark cream kind of aesthetic, which I think would go well in a lot of skates. Also, I really like this t-shirt because I am a massive coffee fanatic and as the father to a child who didn't sleep through the night for the first two years, 
I very much have a lot of affection for coffee as well. So props on a great collection, a really extensive collection. And yeah, hopefully we see even more from them in the future. In other news, Joe Atkinson has teamed up with Edo Goods out of Germany to produce a new clothing collection and a new accompanying video. And it is awesome. I could watch Joe Atkinson skate transition for hours. Just watching him float around curves on his skates is magical. And I'd be very surprised if anyone else thought otherwise. Just the way he commands transitions is unbelievable. In this video, you get to see him command a bunch of different environments in London. You can see him skating the skateboarding mecca that is South Bank and just absolutely flawlessly gliding through the place. He also skates the famous bank to bank gap that many people will remember from the England video volume that Josh Petty does a 540 over. And one of my favorite tricks in this is the disaster true spin fish brain stall that he does here. It just came as a complete surprise and the way that he stomped it was perfect. But fashion comes at a price. The t-shirt is 55 euros, the long sleeve is 70 euros, and my favorite item in the collection, the skate pants, are 165 euros. If you fall and you rip those, that is going to bring a tear to the eye. It would definitely bring a tear to my eye anyway. Basically, if we see you out skating any of these items at the local skate park, we will know that you are ballin'. I recently had Eugen Ennen on a new segment that I'm doing called Under the Influence. You can get the link below, but he's back at the forefront of our minds once again because he has a new promo out for his undercover pro wheel and it is ridiculous. That is the only word that I can use to describe it. Utterly ridiculous. You know how when like Dustin Latimer and Dominic Sagona just reached that stage, the standard tricks just didn't cut it anymore and they just started experimenting and bending the art form of rollerblading so much that it just became all, almost unrecognizable, just like sliding down steps, jumping in and out of trees, jumping through holes, like just incorporating all this other stuff, incorporating break dancing. I feel like Eugen N is on that level and he's been on there for a while now. In a recent skate promo, he's doing like alley Michael Jackson's down handrails. Now, he's just getting as fidgety and as tech as humanly possible on rails, dropping down, coming up, lifting the foot off, putting it back on. It is, you're watching it and it's just a complete mind bender. My favorite section though in the promo is where you basically see his mind working on this little curb setup where he's hopping onto it, he's doing one foots, he's doing drag throughs, he's doing cess slides into grinds and it's just cool watching someone's brain like start manifesting new tricks and you just, you can, you feel like you can see him thinking about the spot and figuring it out in real time and it is fascinating to watch. Eugen Ennen also drops a fakie 720 down a stair set in there just in case, you know, you got freaked out by all the weird tricks. The skating footage is chopped with a bunch of clips from the Alien films to tie in with the Alien motif of the wheel and the soundtrack to this Eugen, I love you, but it is incredibly cringe. It's this really cheesy, tacky anime soundtrack music. I don't believe for a single second that Eugen Ennen and his brother Daniel are sitting at home listening to this music going, oh yeah, you know what man, that is a banger. Not a chance. I've always held the belief that good skaters can do great tricks, but great skaters can just do whatever they want and Eugen Ennen is 100% fallen into that category. It basically just feels at this point like he's taking the piss. Speaking of taking the piss, have you seen Sasha Lopez's Instagram clip from last week? What in the one-footed, spinning, cess lady, physically impossible other world was that? If you don't follow Sasha Lopez on Instagram, you are missing out because I feel like these occurrences are happening weekly at the moment. He has just got some serious foot control and it is an absolute pleasure to watch. 
Danny Malm, one of my favourite rollerbladers at the moment from America. A little while ago he put up an Instagram edit saying that it was unused clips from Hit It Wet, which implied that it was either like B-roll or stuff that he didn't think that it was that good. It is definitely that good and it's now up in the Hit It Wet YouTube channel so you can experience all of it in its full screen monitor sized glory. These tricks are not B-roll. This trick is not B-roll. This trick is also not B-roll. I love Danny Malm. I feel like everything he's brought out recently has just been unbelievable. His section in Crazy Pills, his section for them skates. I was talking to Cameron Talbot recently. Apparently they've got stuff in the works, so there's going to be even more Danny Malm soon. Like I said, he's one of my favourite skaters in America at the moment. I love his spot choice. I love his trick execution. I love his trick ideas. Danny love you. Spring Cup 2023 edits are starting to surface online and out of the blocks first is Older Blading who came out with this exceptionally executed edit. I was kind of unsure about the format for this year's Spring Cup with the cash for tricks and just skating one obscot at a time. I was skeptical of it. I, I don't feel like it is like a major competition format but the way that he's shown this in the highlights reel makes it look like a lot of fun, makes it look like everyone's just getting creative and coming up with their own take on the different obstacles. John Bellino obviously absolutely killed it, but there's some great skating in there from other people like Mikhail Vietzeman, Randy Spicer, God, uh, who else? Uh, Yandriel Solberio, like so many people. I thoroughly recommend you check it out. Also in the description, Odor Blading killed it with this edit. As if that wasn't enough, he's also dropped a video for the Crowder Power contest that happened the week before Bladen Cup, the one where Zach Savage went on an absolute tear and got a well-deserved first place. He also stomped this. I want to take time out and give a quick shout out to Daniela Salgado. She has been unbelievable this year. She skated really well at Winter Clash, she skated really well at Crowder Power Contest, and she skated really well at Blading Cup. Razors, take notice. You know how the other week I was ranting and raving about Jumbo and how it's my favourite crew in Blading at the moment and how their YouTube channel is one of my favourite channels to watch? Well, they've got a new episode out where they've got Andrew Broom just dropping casual 720s on street. The guy's just figuring out spots and having a great old time, having beers, talking crap, and generally just having a laugh. Subscribe to their channel, watch their videos, thank me later. Oh. 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 <laughs> and if you really enjoy crew edits, I thoroughly recommend checking out the channel Verse Club. It's on the screen now. They've got a new video out called Break Tokyo 2, or Tokyo Break 2, can't remember. But it's got a full section from Shintaro Nakayama and the rest of the guys. They've got a bunch of videos on, on there. It's documenting the Tokyo scene really well. They've also got some historical stuff on there. They've got this old street course, this old like skate park slash street course thing that if you've ever watched the early T-Bone films or like the early hoaxes, or just any of those kind of like early 90s aggressive videos where they documented the scene out there, you will recognize this park and you will recognize some of these skaters. It's a really cool time capsule. Like I said, Verse Club on YouTube, subscribe, check out their videos. They are very good. Remember when John Julio accidentally leaked a new colorway for the Them 909? Well, I asked Coda Halt about it in the new episode of Platform Podcast, which there is a link to below, just came out on Sunday. That's right, Sunday. You can check it out. And Coda denies that they're going forward with it. He says that it's just a sample, one of many samples lying around the shop. What's the deal with the cream prototypes? <laughs> I knew this was coming, dude. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, there's there's nothing going on with it. It was, uh, I think I it's just I don't believe that for a second. That was, like, that's okay. You don't have to. Okay. <laughs>
Affilio is going to be Affilio is going to be teasing us and putting them in putting them in videos and pretending he doesn't know they're there. <laughs> people, people are going to ask about it, right? Oh, true, true. It's funny. Uh, Sean just texted me about it too. <laughs> Which Sean? SK. All oh, right. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that one's just a sample. I don't think there's a. Uh, any production going on with that? <laughs> Billy O'Neill gave me that line about the white mesmer, and then it came out. It came out just with a grey soul plate, and I was like, "You lying bastard!" Hey, I guess you'll just have to see them. <laughs> but is he telling the truth? Because if you've seen Ryan Parker's recent Instagram, he has a clip in Philadelphia that was filmed by Sean Kelso, and the CSI investigators among you, the eagle-eyed, may have noticed a pair of skates in the background of the clip. Now the quality is terrible, it is a still of an Instagram video, shocking quality, but the colour does not look too dissimilar to the skate that John teased. Now, I'm not saying they are the same skate, but they could be. Note the incredibly blurry green accents. Could this be a potential collaboration with them skates in Basement, a Basement 909? I asked Ryan Parker about it because obviously he's the skater in the clip and all he would tell me is they were pretty skates. He wouldn't confirm or deny if it was a new skate or if it was a Basement 909. So I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions. Massive shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're listed on the screen now. You can join the Patreon for as little as £3 a month and it's the best way to support this channel. Let me know what you thought of the news stories from this week. Which ones did you like? Which ones didn't you like? What are your thoughts on a potential new Basement them skate? Yeah, let me know. Speak to you guys soon.